My name is uh, Dan. I'm a Microsoft 365 consultant and developer based in Denmark. I'm mostly active on Twitter where you can find me. Uh, it's over at Tandand. And uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions about this, uh, this demo that we're going to see. And there's, yeah, really just uh, ask anything you feel like. So what is uh, the Quick Links web part that I've created? Well, it sort of started off uh, based on having a lot of clients who had the feedback that they wanted to do, they like the Quick Links thing, but they want a little bit more. So maybe they want to, to have a panel open when they click the button instead of redirecting to somewhere else. They're just like, they're 80% happy with it. And then I heard the feedback somewhere in the community as well. I think there was a GitHub issue mentioning wanting to see the open or wanting to see Microsoft open source their Quick Links web part because the drag and drop features are pretty cool. So like wanting to drag and drop things and actually be able to edit your web part more like intuitively for the users. And I thought being a Microsoft 365 consultant, uh, I don't actually often like build proper web parts. I kind of just botch things together. Uh, so using the property pane is not something that I do all that much, to be honest. Uh, so I wanted to like learn or be better to do that or better at doing that. So I figured why why not like try and make a sample where I try to replicate the Quick Links web part because it's got the drag and drop, it's got the dynamic property pane, and I can add like those last things that I feel like it's missing. So uh, I figured we should start off with like a quick demo of it. So if I open up my screen here, uh, there we go. So essentially, what I've created is just a, a web part. Uh, I call it just PNP Quick Links here. Oh, let's go ahead and open that move the old one just for, for the sake, where we have drag and drop like you expect it to be there. We can click a link. It will open up the property pane. You're able to choose things about it, change the icon using some uh, PNP reusable controls here. And uh, that actually works pretty well. Now, one thing that I also really had a like harder time than I would actually expect it to be uh, doing was the switching context. So say you're in the, uh, the default like property pane here, you're switching up some layouts and you want to edit a link. Getting it to switch over actually took some time and I'll show like how I did that. But what was probably actually my biggest challenge in building this thing uh, was getting this like drag and drop feature to, to work the way I wanted it to. And I'll have some, some like uh, small clips later of how it went during the, the process. Um, but essentially I created like, uh, I think 80% of what the tiles quick links web part can do. We have different sizes. We have the ability to only show an icon. You can click, you can add a new link. The one thing that I decided actively not to do was audience targeting, uh, just because I didn't feel like dealing with it. So that might be for a later demo or something. But yeah, that's essentially the web part using the PNP reusable control uh, web part title as well. So really just trying to replicate what Microsoft is doing out of the box so we can do better or do more with it. Uh, one of the things that I had a uh, request for like a while back and just said you can't really do is something as simple as putting in anything here that is not a HTTPS link. So in this case, uh, opening a Word document as a template or even linking to OneDrive files. Those are like Office URI schemes. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar, I will go ahead and I'll post a link in the chat for those, which is essentially just a way to, to like open up Word or interact with the desktop clients. Uh, but the default Quick Links web part will not accept any links that is not HTTPS enabled. It will essentially just add HTTPS at the front, the link will break. So I, that's the thing that I really wanted to, to like get working and then that works nice here. Uh, I can publish the site and if I click it, it will ask me to open up Word. Uh, now I am not signed in on the desktop client on this machine, so I will not open it, but it does actually work. So that's actually like the, the main like driving force behind building this web part and obviously getting the practice. Yeah, so let's move on with the slides. So I promised some like demonstrations of the uh, the attempts at drag and drop. You can see in the lower like lower part of the screen. Uh, that's kind of how it went for a little while. I think there's a Twitter thread somewhere out there of me getting more and more slowly insane uh, trying to get it working. It took like three or four hours because I was using a library that did not support what I was trying to do. And then I demonstrate on the right how the uh, the default like column view in the SharePoint lists. I realize now there's a lot going on on the screen. The default like uh, view in SharePoint 
the board view doesn't even support this. Uh, it just sorts by whatever column you've set it to sort by. So you can't actually drag and drop the cards at different like positions. And figuring out how to do that actually it took like quite a while. What I ended up doing was I was looking at the DevOps because it has a like you can see more in the dev DevOps boards, and you can see that they're using some kind of number to to position the card. But I couldn't really figure out how they were doing it. So what I did is I thought, uh, well, I'm going to need some kind of variable that I'm sorting by. So I called that the sort weight. Uh, so essentially, what I'm doing with the sort weight is I am saying this is like I'm going to just or sort the items by this actually this value and what i did is i said uh zero will be my lowest value and one will be my highest value uh, that way i can essentially say anytime i put in a new tile give it a value that is exactly in between whichever two i am working on so let's say i wanted to enter or put input a new link on the left that would get 0 0.25 because that is like in between 0.5 and zero and this way the number will essentially always stay between zero and one, but it will just get a very large amount of decimals in the end, but it will actually work. So adding a new one in between those two would be 0 0.0375. And that way, whenever I switch them around, I can always just like grab the, the item just before it, which in this case would like in the middle there would be 0 0.25 and the other one 0 0.5 and divide those by two. And then if I move that thing around, so let's say I move the middle one to the left like this, it's essentially just going to be like, oh, that's 0.125 because that is in between, between 0 and 0.25. So uh, looking at the code that is doing this, it is, and I mean, it looks more complex than it is. One of the things that took me a little bit of time was getting like getting it to work in this scenario where you don't have enough links. So if you have 10 links and you're dragging it to somewhere where there's two new links, that works awesome. But sometimes you're going to be moving it where it is now essentially its own neighbor uh, in the calculation, which took a little bit of, of work. Of course, the sample links will also be provided where you will find like the code if you need it. Uh, I decided not to really share the code on screen in Visual Studio this time. But what is happening is we're taking all the links and we're sorting those by the sort weight. That way we have an already sorted array, which is what we're also working with in the UI. So I'm just like uh, duplicating the array. And then I wrote this get average function that just makes sure that if the previous one is null, I'm handling it and giving it the correct one and just looping through uh, and essentially just returning the sort of the array. Yeah, there we go. And moving on to, to the other part of the demo, is the property pane. The property pane is one of those things that is actually really awesome about working with SPFX, but like I said in the beginning that I don't get to use all that often. Mm -hmm. I tend to just hard code values. But working with it, it's actually really neat how you can build something that is so generic, you can actually hand it out to, to multiple people. Um, and they can configure it based on their needs. Um, so here we're just seeing like the same thing I sort of went over in the demo that you can change properties and, and it interacts live with the web part. And I guess uh, based on that, I, I like took a few learnings that I, I want to keep in mind the next time I'm building something where I'm using the property pane. Those are. You can uh, use index, you can use arrays in the uh, property. I guess we can call it the property back. Um, I don't really know what, if there's a name for that. Uh, so essentially, you can just like use square brackets and you can just put a number in there, and that actually works. Uh, accessing, yeah, accessing the data in the like property back. Let's call it that, the property control JSON thing or whatever it's called, which is really neat. Uh, and it, I think it's also what the uh, there's the PNP controls that you, reusable control that you can use that essentially gives you a list you can use. Um, I think that does the same thing. Another thing is it's actually possible to, to trigger opening the property pane directly from your like code. Now, having used the PNP or like placeholder control thing for a while, uh, obviously I would have known that you could do it, but uh, never, never thought to do it in the solution. That was really neat. And a nice thing to, to keep in mind that you can actually like write from your web part trigger that you want to change. And lastly, Something that I always did was return once from my property get property pane configuration uh, method. What I realized is there's nothing stopping you from returning several times. It's not a static JSON object. So you could actually have several scenarios returning different property pane things. You could also use pages in, in the one big one you're building. 
But uh, what I find is whenever I'm actually building my large property penis, it gets really hard to manage that large JSON object. So, so being able to split it out either into several returns or build the JSON object first and, and return it was actually like kind of a, a eye opener, at least for me, not having realized all those things you could actually change. Yeah, and uh, that's about it. Thank you so much for coming and seeing the, the session. I will share my sample link in the chat as well. And if there are any questions, please uh, feel free to, to send them in the chat or reach out uh, either later or on Twitter. I will be available there as well. Yeah, thank you. And back to you, Gary. Thank you very much, Dan. Again, fantastic demo. Thanks for going into detail as well. I'm sure the, the sorting kind of uh, iteration, if you like, was worth it in the end though, right? You, it's the, it's the process, right? Oh, it's not quite working, it's not quite working. And then, hey, it's worthwhile all this time. <laughs> Absolutely. Fantastic. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.